Hey everyone, this is David at Finish Line Factory. We're here at Porsche West Broward. Where's the Porsche logo? There it is. It's back there somewhere. So, we are going on a rally. We're going with Fast Life Rally. We're going to the Revs Institute in Naples. It's about a couple hundred miles away on the other, other side of Florida. And uh, yeah, we're just meeting here at Porsche West Broward. I have the Miata here, an orange McLaren GT. There's a yellow Lamborghini uh, Aventador SV coming with us. It's gonna be a fun, fun rally. Got myself a little coffee over at Porsche. Uh, so, yeah, let's see the cars that are here and let's see uh, what's going on. All right, what do we got going on? We got a McLaren GT. Who's going on the rally? I got a Porsche Cayman, the Miata. This is a GLE Mercedes, a bit different. Aventador SV. These are all inventory cars, so they're just uh, hanging out. Oh, a 911 GT3, great option. Got a Corvette, Aston Martin DB9 in the corner. Oh, we got two NSXs. That's pretty rad. I think I saw uh, both of these, or at least that one at the toy rally. We have this Turbo Lotus Elise. This is Antonio's car. You might remember him from the uh, Halloween rally. BMW M6 V10. A Dodge Ram. And a Ferrari FF. Lamborghini Gallardo. This is a Superleggera. Hmm. It's a bit different. I don't know if it's a... Is it a real Superleggera? Because I thought the Superleggera... No, you know what? I'm thinking of the Super Trofeo. Because uh, the Super Trofeo has a uh, complete carbon fiber hood. So, yeah. You have a Lamborghini Superleggera. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. E-gear transmission. Interior's in great shape. This thing is beautiful. There's the V10 engine. So, I'm not certain, but... I think you, perhaps the Superleggera, or, you know, no, no, I was thinking of the Squadra Corsa, that's what I was thinking of. So the Superleggera stands for super light in Italian, and it has this carbon fiber hood in the back with the window, but the Squadra Corsa doesn't have the window, it's just a complete carbon fiber hood, and it has arrow catch hood pins holding down the hood, not a uh, hinge, so it makes it even lighter. Let's take a look at the front. Oh, we got the carbon fiber mirrors, there you go. Really, really nice car. Look at that. See, if I were to buy a Lambo, I'd have to be an LP560 Superleggera, one like this. Oh, my apologies. LP570. What's going on, Lewis? There was one. Come on, Dude. Man. Why don't you tell us there's a driver's meeting? What's up, bro? There's a uh, driver's there's, a, there's a driver's meeting. <laughs> there's a meeting of the drivers. <laughs> Clearly, because they're all coming this way. I guess we're just uh, following them. Yeah, all right. Is that what happened? I don't know. But uh, it's starting to rain a little bit, so uh, be careful. We're rolling, let's roll. Brandon, oh, you, you're passing for me. Yeah. Alright, we're going to have the driver's meeting and then we're going to roll out to uh, to Naples. So, I don't think I'm going to film. Uh, it would be kind of dangerous to try to record and drive at the same time. So, we're just going to jump straight to the Revs Institute. <laughs> alright, alright, we are here at the Mikisuki Service Plaza. And the Miata has a problem. At first I thought my alternator had failed, but it actually turns out that the belt is fried. So it seems that the belt somehow... Where is the belt? Somewhere in there. Right there? Where's my finger? Right there. So the belt is fried. Like, let me see if I can push on it with the monopod. Like, it is so soft. Like, it should be, it should be rigid. So like, here's the power steering belt, right? Rigid. You can't move it. But the, but the alternator belt, let me see there some focus on it. There we go. See, the alternator belt is soft, but the power steering belt is rigid. So that belt has failed. Uh, this is a problem because I cannot continue unless... Uh, there's a hunch. If I can get a 12 millimeter socket, I may be able to crank down on the tensioner bolt and uh, that 12 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter wrench, crank on the tensioner bolt and see if I can uh, get back on the road. Antonio might have a 12 millimeter wrench. Let's see what we got. So my the uh, the tensioner for my alternator belt seems to have loosened up, or maybe the belt itself is fried. Yeah. But I think if I can get a wrench, I can crank down on the bolt. No wrench. All right. I'm sorry, bro. It's all good. It's all good. Let's see what we can find. Okay, I just realized uh, all Ferraris come with a small toolkit, and there's a Ferrari FF on the rally, so I might be able to use the toolkit out of that one. All right, we're gonna check. Do we have the factory toolkit? It might be like under the trunk. Oh, yeah, good point. You see if it's under there. That's where it would probably be. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. Uh, oh, they don't give you anything? Nope. I got very little. I got gloves. You know what? They may not give you toolkits in the FF. I got a tire repair change and a flare and some fuses. That's about it. Dang. All right. Uh, worth a shot. I'll try the truck over there. Yeah. All right, so we got some tools. So let's see if we can uh, crank on the alternator bolt. All right, huge, huge thanks to these guys with the trailer. I was uh, able to successfully, very slowly, because there's no space to swing a wrench, quarter turn at a time, uh, change the uh, the alternator belt. So, oh, well, at least tighten the bolt. All right, made it. Car's right here. And uh, it was actually a nice, uneventful drive. Thanks, thanks to Penn. Where'd you go, Penn? Yep, Penn here. Stayed with me the whole way with his uh, with his Cayman. Actually stayed behind, so make sure I got uh, I got here safely. So, thanks, buddy. No worries. I had the feeling that, like, I, I I don't know, but I had this gut feeling when we started the rally that, like, like nothing, not like something seriously bad was going to happen, but just like your, some bullshit was going to happen. You know what I mean? Your car just hates Naples. I don't know what it is, and I don't know why. Yeah, the the, the first time uh, on the way here, the car was running a little bad. And then on the way back to, um, to uh, Miami, I blew the engine. The, the second rally we did uh, with the Miata, I, I actually got here just fine. But this one, well, I'll take, I'll take the belt coming off. <laughs> the belt loosening up, so. All right, so we're here at the residency. Let's get inside. Man. Yeah, you know what I'm referring to, right? What are you referring to? Oh, get the camera off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, this McLaren F1. Oh, this! Oh, this was actually featured on. Yeah. Um, by or Ed Bully and driving it. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember this car. This, this car. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. You know. So. Oh my God. This is. This is my first time seeing a McLaren F1. Really? Yeah. Oh. This is the reason yeah, I come here. Dude, thirteen million dollars, give or take. Two hundred forty-one miles per hour. This was the fastest car in the world in the nineties. Welcome, welcome to Naples. Dude. <laughs> this is the McLaren F1. Oh my god. I've seen more speed tails than I have McLaren F1s. Oh my god. It's so perfect. This is the goat. We've got the center wheel, center, center seating position. It's a th three-seater supercar. This is insane. Pen, check it out. Where the hell did everybody else go? Dude. Uh, there's a few people up on the stairs. It's the Fiat. Pen. It's the Barth Rally car. Yeah. It's it's the one with the they made with the hood that couldn't close. Yeah. Like like they just they sold it like that. Uh huh. Wow. Hold on. We get. I know this is no flash, but technically this is a flash. Look at that. Oh, that is so sick. They literally just they discovered that the car went faster with the hood up, so they just made it with a hood that couldn't close. They just sold it like that. Dude. This is actually the engine right here. Here's the gearbox. It actually goes forward. I think it's just some kind of... Uh... Oh, oh, it's a... I see. It's a uh, transaxle. It's a rear engine transmission. So the, there's actually the... Um, that is the uh, axle flanges. The differential is actually here. It's just some kind of transfer case that uh, transfers power into the transmission here. This is pretty rad. There you go. Dual carburetors. Check this out. This is a Bugatti Type 55 Super Sport. This is one of the very early Bugattis. Oh, that is incredible. Look at those wheels. This is from the 50s. Man. This is a 1928 Hispano Suiza H6C. 
I know that because that's what the sign says. But Hispano Suiza is a, is a defunct automaker, and they made these beautiful, beautiful cars from uh, the 20s and 30s. And look at these things; like they're they're huge. As a matter of fact, this it looks like a boat. <laughs> that's why it's called the. Uh, I guess was, I think that's why they call it a boat tail. But you see here, there you go. I believe that is the um, the adjustable ignition timing. So back in the day, the cars didn't have their own ignition timing, I believe. You had to manually adjust it uh, as you drove. So that must have been uh, interesting. So check this out. This is so cool. Look how large the car is in comparison to the, car, to the cabin size. Like, wow. Imagine, imagine pulling around town in this thing. Look at this. Class. Beautiful. This red shirt is a horseless carriage. And check this out. This is actually the chassis. They have another one here. This is another H6 seat, but this is just the chassis. So all that stuff is sitting on top of this frame. And we got a really, really good view of this gigantic, I'm guessing a straight, straight six? What is it? What engine? How many cylinders is this? One, two, three, four. But what's this thing? Is it a six cylinder or is it a four cylinder? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. Let's see right here. Mm. Doesn't say. Oh no, it's a six cylinder engine. So there you go. So I guess the the intake ports for the, these two cylinders are very close. Look at all this. Look, all, <laughs> look at the size of the steering shaft. There you go. We have the uh, gearbox down there. The drive line going down to the differential right here. There we go. And uh, when they say that old cars had uh, a suspension not much better than a wagon, they really aren't kidding. I mean, look at this. They've got leaf springs here, and everything is kind of just articulated there. Uh, it's a very advanced wagon, but ultimately it's still kind of the same design. Oh man, this one's even older. This is a Moore's 1902 Type Z. Look at this thing. Probably saying that wrong. So it has a four cylinder engine producing 60 horsepower at 1,400 RPM. Look at this thing. It looks like a tank, <laughs> right? It looks like something you'd ride into battle with. Look at this thing. Oh wow, it's a chain drive. Look at that. Look, how, look how thick the chain is. Oh, it's a dual chain drive. I guess that's what they did in lieu of differential because they probably didn't, maybe they didn't have differentials back then. It's interesting. They have opened the McLaren F1. I don't know. But we drive it. There you go. Look at this. Oh, I see the, uh, I see the, I see the cables, that right there. Just want to get a good shot of the engine. Look at that carbon fiber intake. Well, carbon fiber plenum, individual throttle bodies. There you go. This is so cool. Probably a full titanium exhaust. So different. Look at that. There's all the uh, gold heat wrap that they use for protecting uh, the carbon fiber from the exhaust. Check that out. So the whole car is carbon fiber. So in order to prevent the uh, the carbon fiber from getting damaged, because the heat would damage the resin and would cause it to sort of melt, they protected it with this gold wrap. Look at this. And you can tell this car is built like a race car because it's got AN fittings right there. That's interesting. It's kind of like a catch cam in a way. It's some kind of vent cam, but it has like very clearly. This must be the the coolant overflow tank because it very clearly has like a BMW cap on the top of it. Look at that. There you go. Look at this stuff. 
shelves of books. Here's the other side of the engine. So I can't get so great. So we're going to get the interior. Look at this thing. So the McLaren F1 has three seats. It actually has a manual transmission. That's the shifter right there. Look at this thing. There you go. All the interior bits, even the seats are carbon fiber. The steering wheel has a carbon fiber uh, center. The uh, tunnels on the side are carbon fiber. Of oh, course, carbon fiber. There you go. Oh, look at that. So there's a look. So that's the trunk. Yeah, there's one. Essentially. Yeah, there's one on each side. Uh, and it comes with a luggage specifically fitted two left, to... Two, there's two on this side, one on that side, I believe. But there's also, you come with a bulb kit, so there's an extra set of bulbs for all the ones oh, on the wow. side of the car. You have a little hazardous triangle, a fix a flat cylinder to fill up your tire. There you go. Um, Carbon fiber. There's a tow hook. Well, that's in the front. There you go. There's a tow hook, a little set of tools. So you guys are keeping a small... Have, we also have the whole toolbox. Nice. It comes with a big toolbox to the computer and all the... Oh, is that, is that the oil tank for the dry sump? the oil tank, yeah, for the dry sump. And then on the other side is the whole fuse box where you Look connect the load in. There you go. There's the dry sump. That must be the oil level sensor right there. Uh, that's the dipstick. Oh, that's the dipstick? Yep. And then they actually oh, yeah, the oil level sensor. Tool. You get your own rag, gloves, and then this tool. Oh, so those, those rags are part of the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this tool, this, that's how you would grab it, spin it off. And, oh, uh, I see. Yeah, it has the clarity. Yeah, because I imagine it must be hot. And oh, yeah, getting, you have to check it. And getting, uh, getting at there. Uh, yeah, it gets toasty. That's yeah. actually a cool vent to cool the oil tank a little bit. Not only that, but I imagine like the, the torque required to take it off once it's hot is probably oh, yeah, quite awesome. a bit. It's like Plus with it being degrees. aluminum, you burn yourself yeah. getting it off. <laughs> oh yeah. This is so cool.